This video is going to cover the topic of unique triangles. Be sure the date and topic are at the top of the page. The essential question for this video is how do we know if given measurements will result or produce, result in um, or produce one unique triangle? We already know certain things that must be true in order to create a triangle. For example, we know, of course, that the triangle must have three sides, and therefore it also has three angles. We also now know the what we call the triangle inequality theorem, which tells us that if we add two of the smaller sides, we would get a number that is greater than the third side. And lastly, we know, of course, that the angles within the triangle must add up to a total of 180 degrees. And before we go on from there, let's just kind of talk about this part here, the angles. So for example, if I know, um, talking about angles, that if angle one is 30 degrees and angle two is 90 degrees, I can figure out what angle three should be. Because I could just say, oh, it's 180 degrees, I'll take away the 30 that's already been accounted for and also the 90, which means that the third angle must be 60 degrees. If, however, someone tells me that one angle of a triangle is 90 degrees and the other is 100, then I know that there cannot be a triangle at all. Because, of course, 90 plus 100 is already 190 degrees. That's already larger than 180, so there can be no possible triangle. So just something we haven't talked about, but to keep in mind um, that when we are looking at the constraints of a triangle, you have to make sure that the total degrees in your triangle adds up to exactly 180 degrees. So we know how to be sure a triangle can be made, right? We know that. But here's the big question for today. How do we know if more than one triangle can be made? Or on the other hand, do the measurements just produce one unique triangle? So let's imagine that somebody tells us that we know three side lengths that we want to make into a triangle. So someone says, all right, make me a triangle that is a side length of 6, 4, and 9. Now, I know this will make a triangle, right, because 6 plus 4 is greater than 9. So I have no problem with that. The question is, can I make more than one option? So let's take a look at all these options and make sure you make a little sketch for yourself as well. Right, so I've drawn or I've found an image here that has six triangles, and all of them have the same three sides. So does that mean that I can make more than one triangle with three sides that someone tells me to make it with? Well, even though it looks like I have six triangles, if you actually look at it, notice like these two here, this triangle is just a reverse, a flipped version of the other. And if you look carefully at all of these, they're actually all the same triangle. Which means, try as I may, I cannot make a second version of a triangle with these measurements. Any triangle that I make would be the same, so we call this unique, right? If you are given the three sides, it will make one unique triangle. You can flip it and rotate it all you want, but it's just one unique triangle. Sometimes when you're constructing triangles, you don't know what all three sides need to be, but instead there's a constraint about your angles in addition to a couple of the sides. So maybe they are telling you that you know what two sides need to be um, and you also know the angle that something needs to fit into. So the question is, is there more than one possible triangle? So let's try this by saying that we know we want a side of five, we want a side of seven, and we want an angle, here's my little angle symbol, my angle to be 30 degrees. So when you think about making a triangle like that, can you make just one like we saw before? Or are there a couple options that might show up? Well, just like before, I have an image here to show um, some triangles that you could make. And it looks as though we have maybe nine possible triangles. But just like before, we want to make sure that these are actually um, different from one another. And so you can see that some of them do look like perhaps they are just a reflection of each other, right? So this one here looks a little bit like this one here. Maybe it's just kind of been flipped around a little bit, but there are also some pretty significantly different triangles, right? So we have a triangle where um, seven looks like it's the long side, and then we have one where the number we don't know is the long side. That's a totally different triangle. 
So if someone was to make a triangle and they only had the restrictions of two sides and an angle, there actually would be some wiggle room. There'd be some leeway into how they decide to create that triangle. So there are multiple possibilities and we would say that given these restrictions, we would not have one unique triangle. As with a lot of rules though, there are exceptions. I'm just gonna mark an exception here for you. And that exception actually matches the two triangles that I pointed out earlier. And that is that if you know the angle they're specifically talking about is between the two given sides, then there actually is just one unique option. So see here we have the 30 degrees was in between the seven and the five, and that was the same here between the seven and the five. If we know specifically where the angle needs to be, and it's not just that there's 30 degrees somewhere in the triangle, then it does produce just one unique option. So kind of keep that in mind as well. There are also times when maybe you are given two angles and just one side. So maybe you know that the triangle you need to make needs to fit into a 40 degree corner on one end, 80 degrees on the other, and that one of the sides needs to be six. We can see in the example that I have for you here that there are um, a myriad of triangles that meet that criteria, right? So all of these have 40 degrees in one corner, they have 80 degrees in another, and they have a length of six somewhere on the triangle. And when you look at them, again, you can see that not all of these are the same. As we saw with our previous example, sometimes there are some of the triangles that are similar, right? So like this one here and this one both seem to have a six on the side in between the 40 and 80 degrees. So there are some repetitions, but there are multiple possibilities. Which means that if we were just told that we have two angles you have to make and one side, there would not be one unique triangle that would be created. However, there are a couple examples, like I pointed out um, as I circled the triangles above, that there would only be one possibility. And that was that if you know that that side has to be in between your two angles, then there is just one. It could be flipped around and rotated all you want, but it's really just the same triangle that's being created every time. And actually the same is true if you are told that the given side has to be opposite the two angles. For example, I'm gonna mark these in blue. This six is across from both of these angles, well, across from the 80 and it's kind of, it's not in between either of them, it's in the same spot on both of them. That triangle is identical as well. Now that was a lot of information and it's something that you'll probably understand better when we start kind of playing around with triangles and trying to draw different options ourselves. But I'm just gonna mark down four criteria or four conditions that will let you know that there is one triangle available for you. The first was if you are given all three sides. That makes the same triangle every time. The other was if you knew two of the three sides and you knew that one of the angles, the angle that's in between those two sides had to be a specific amount. That will make one triangle every time. Likewise, if you know two of the three angles and you know that the side in between them has to be a certain length, then that can only produce one triangle. And lastly, if you also know two angles and you know that the given side has to be opposite one of the angles, then that also produces one particular unique triangle. Now this might seem like a lot, we'll certainly practice it. And triangles are really important shapes for us to know. As I'm actually making this right now, I'm looking out my window watching some construction being built. And triangles are a huge part of st um, stabilizing buildings and bridges. Um, and so triangles are an important um, shape that we need to be comfortable with here. Um, so remember that the essential question of the video was how to know if given measurements will produce one unique triangle. Um, we'll talk more about it, of course, in class, but this is a good list for you to have that you can refer back to anytime we're working with it.